I would like to introduce you guys to a concept of uh, the new order, I believe it's called. I can't believe I forgot how that, what the acronym stands for. But here's the gist. Uh, if you don't know what Hoi 4 is, it's Hearts of Iron 4. It's a paradox game. It's one of those games where you just paint maps, right? And it, it takes place during World War II, but there are a lot of mods for it. Another popular one is Kaiserreich, where if, what if Germany had won World War I? And it tries to set out a, a 1930s scenario where um, Ukraine is independent and all sorts of weird stuff where what, what if Germany had won the First World War? This mod is a little bit different. It takes place, I think, in like the 1960s, 1970s, and they ask the question, what What if Germany won the Second World War? And that's an interesting question. I don't know if Hearts of Iron 4 is the best mo uh, game to answer that question, because Hearts of Iron 4 is very specifically a um, World War II game, and it would be hard to replicate n Cold War conditions in Hearts of Iron 4. But a bunch of developers got together, um, in particular one person who is the face of the, the, the mod, and they've tried to answer that. Would you like to guess what the issue with their development system is? Would anyone like to, to wager a guess at what obstruction has occurred that is causing a complication for their development cycle? Now, I'll, I'll give you guys a, a head start. Troons. That's right. That's right, gamers. The answer is uh, people like this who, and this is the really, really, really weird thing about this mod is that here you have a question of what if the Axis had won World War II and it's being answered by people who are far left communist trannies, which is just fucking weird because because I can't imagine how they can even speculate on that. Like they, 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 they're trying to envision a world that, that, that they would hate, that they don't support, that they wouldn't be allowed to live in. And they have to, you know, try and figure out years down the line, like what the cold war would look like in this time frame, in, in this timeline. And it's all fantasy, but you would try to base that off historical speculation off uh, perhaps even you know documents and statements and uh, manifestos based off people from the Axis, but uh, that's not the case here. There's no love for any of that. So you have it's, it would be a very difficult project to for them to to do because they don't their hearts are not in it, right? Um, and unlike with Hoi Four, the actual game, it's not based off history either. You're not looking at things that almost happened or did happen and and try and elaborate off that with a historical perspective it's all fantasy so that's why people like this end up as uh generals in what appears to be a, a anarcho-communist general um for a post-axis win europe right and the, what happened is is that their gitlab uh got exposed and a bunch of developer only content was leaked out and um, a lot of people got doxxed, and now it's kind of falling into disarray. And this post um, went to the trouble of highlighting a lot of comments that were being left uh, by developers and other members of the development team uh, to each other in regards to how they felt about the project. And uh, I'm not going to spoil it, but uh, there's a lot of weird shit that immediately sticks out. And it will become imme immediately apparent that... Um, that there's an issue with priorities in this. Uh, as a team lead, I feel like a glorified custodian. Devs make decisions without me. A quarter of my administration was developed in secret, and I got knowledge of it only in secretly formulated questions. I feel as though I'm not trusted, and as though my only duty, task, and even work is to just collect reports once every week, I, there is no transparency between the developers and team leaders beyond the occasional cases we get involved in roundtables. We're referred to as foot soldiers, which I thought was a joke, but ultimately it seems like we're really effectively disposable report collectors and not to be involved in the creative and administrative process beyond that. As a team leader, I get next to no feedback on reports and concerns listed in them until the very last minute. 
This leads to doubts if they were ever even read or checked. And my complaint would be about the organization of works and teams. It happens that there are entire weeks with absolutely no work given, when in other weeks there were an entire focus tree or mechanic to do in little time. The team management is important and not easy, and seeing the big picture also is. I think that team leads and devs should be more in touch with the number of idea guys in the teams to be able to always give a healthy amount of work and not realizing that there's a lot of work to be done at the last moment. So right away, you see the, uh, this this issue of um, developers and team leaders where there is a organizational flaw here where the people who give uh, or who guide the development don't actually contribute any development themselves. And there are issues with developers doing whatever the fuck they want. And that's what they mean by secret development. So people people like this may include whatever the fuck they want in the game. And the people who are left to uh, moderate the development and guide it are ultimately powerless. And I think that's because a lot of them don't know how to code. So you just have like friends of um, the main guy uh, and friends, you know, who don't know anything or who are just weirdos in the discord who get put as team leaders and they don't know anything about the coding. And and to be clear, in a Hearts of Iron 4 mod, there is no actual coding involved. It's, um, it's, it's sort of, it's hard to explain if you don't have any concept of uh, what development is like. But in a normal development cycle, you have, you you have to write code and with hearts of iron 4 and other paradox games you're not really writing code you're just kind of organizing information you start to think like oh i want i want a thing that works like this and i know that there's another thing that works kind of like this but i want that to be here and this part of the game and i want it to work a little bit differently or to be more powerful and you literally just copy over um this information you change names you change numbers you can uh group it differently but there really isn't actually any code work being done it's just people um organizing uh th this structured language that's not th that cannot be considered a programming language it's just information to be fed to the engine to render a certain way and i'm sorry if that doesn't make sense but um my point is that it's not it's not a, a it's not a programming language in that you don't have to navigate certain issues that come with programming. You're mostly just spending the time required to organize things in, that already exist, that are already written, already developed, in such a way that they in, in the actual gameplay they they work a certain way and achieve a desired result. Yeah, that's a very hard hard thing to put into words, but. What I'm saying is they don't know how to code. None of them know how to code, and the team leaders don't do any fucking work, which is why they get shit done behind their back, because they're not actually involved in the code base. They're just sort of sitting there as a team lead, uh, trying to corral these people who all want to do their own thing. And to be fair, they all want to do their own thing because this is something they're doing for fun. None of them get paid. It's all for free. Um... And this, this, these quotes are about the structure and the powers of each role. Um, this is getting too long for a comic complaint, but I'd like to add this. Make the admin structural, structure, structure crystal clear. Write everything that X role should and should not do. No exceptions. The current fluidity we have leaves too much to one's interpretation. That should be enforced by mods. Uh, next one. Could there be something like a one-page document that explains what each role in the team actually does? I've been here since pre-release, and I'm not entirely sure what devs and team leaders do or how they're supposed to interact. I know what devs are. I know that devs are above team leads, but not what each of their duties actually are and what they warrant or why they warrant different roles. I feel like this could help solve some of the problems involving the transparency of chain of command in the team. So not only is it that these people don't have power over each other. Not only is it that developers do whatever the fuck they want, it's not actually clear what people are supposed to be doing and what they're not supposed to be doing. Uh, and everyone seems very confused. And this is the, this is the craziest fucking thing about... Um, I'm not going to read all of this, obviously, but... Um, I, 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 like, okay, I, I, I used to have a job. I want you guys to know this. I actually did once work as a wagey. 
I, I would file my fucking timesheets and I would get paid doing development work in the real world. Once upon a time, a long time ago. Um, I think that every team needs a dev and an active one, someone who would see how development going firsthand and be the one to affect any sort of release date decision. Not all teams have got the luck to have a dev and usually the teams that suffer the most or that suffer the most from release days and crunch. So this, this backs up what I was saying before that a lot of teams don't even have like teams are given jobs to do by whomever and then they don't ever get to do that fucking job because none of them know what they're doing right they don't have a developer and they suffer from crunch now if you've ever listened to jim sterling you know what crunch is because he bitches about it every fucking week but if you don't know um in development ter terms at least crunch is when boss man like my boss used to do would go to a conference and he would try to sell the product to people interested in buying the product. And they would say, uh, can it do this? Can it do this? Can it do this? What about this? And my boss of course would always say, yes, of course I can do that. And then he would walk back from the, the marketing, uh, table where he had made the sale to this big company that very specifically requested a feature a, B and C existed. And then he would come back to my, um, the 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 actual team leader for my development group and he would say we need all those features designed this month and that's crunch because <laughs> then everyone has to very quickly figure out who's working on what and how they're going to get those features made in time for the people that actually the people that he just sold the product to to check and make sure that those features existed and you would work your fucking ass off. You would work 60 hours a week. You know, you would get your overtime and everything. And then at the end, you would be tired and you would take a week off um, and, or do something easy that uh, is, you do tech deck. Usually you would just go back and fix bugs as opposed to writing new features. And he would take it easy for a little while. That's crunch, right? Um, so the fact that these people are doing crunch for uh, something that doesn't make money that they do for free is fucking weird uh, i would i would never do crunch for something that's a mod for a video game because some asshole told reddit that he would have these features done next week you know what i mean uh so it continues my biggest concern is the deadlines i'm tired of seeing my teammates burn themselves out i'm tired of seeing them cry over how many lines of code they've had to do i'm tired of seeing them so tired deadlines need to be more flexible and worded far less harshly no one should be told to get their shit together no deadline should be final the team needs to understand that them staying on is more important to us than getting a patch out on time and then crunch rolls really should go. They're cool and all, but firstly, they re lead to roll inflation. And secondly, I don't think we have any incentives to over. We should have any incentives to overproduce. We already have a big issue with feeling like the people feeling that like they have to crunch more things to strengthen that sentiment should not be provided. That is as with someone with multiple crunch rolls. It just, it really does like, like why just say no. All you have to do is say, no, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm not going to fucking do this. I have other shit to do. I'm playing fucking big rigs over the road racing right now. Um, I'll go work on your fucking, um, what if, what if, um, Spain was anarcho-communist mod tomorrow, but for whatever reason, that's like a big part of their culture. Um, Okay, in this, our team's dev is an idea guy who I and my several months on the team have never seen do any actual work except shooting down ideas, which is just great. Here's the guy, the only guy who is, from what I understand, um, and this is, I, I think, um, no, I'll just read this because this explains it. The current structure of development developers isn't the greatest system in the world for multitude of reasons. Obviously, I'm not saying we take out developers. But I'm saying we need a better system. Currently, the idea of having a dev being a team leader doesn't make much sense, especially when teams like Britain barely have any developer interaction. Uh, basically, what I'm trying to say is each region team should have one developer assigned to make sure shit runs smoothly. And I think at some point they explain that the team leader does the work. The developer is the idea guy, which seems backwards. 
They have crunching deadlines because they want to pretend they're real devs. I guess so. I mean, I guess when you're paid by the government to sit around and, and shoot HRT, you don't have to worry too much about actual deadlines and shit. Um, and their their system is just completely upside down. Pink Panzer is the guy who was the, the lead dev for a while. And he was the one who took all the um, all the credit, basically, for this shit. And, and they're complaining about him, saying, I feel like Panzer just isn't active at all, even though he's the lead dev. Why is there no communication from him? And if he's burned out and active, then why is he still the lead dev? Does he have an active role administering, or does he just veto stuff and move on? I know he started the mod, but it has come far past Panzer now. Hundreds of others have put hundreds of hours into the mod. It just feels weird. I just want an answer, really. Um... That's that's also common. I experienced that with uh, the Space Station 13 shit, where the lead dev is just some fucking asshole who doesn't do anything. And all he does is sh shoot down ideas and remove shit that he doesn't like. Um, so just systemic issues where these people don't fucking talk to each other. And this is also really weird. Um, I, I, can't, even, I can't even describe this, because it's so fucking insane. Uh, there were, I mentioned like the secret dev where people just did whatever the fuck they want and they got merged in. Um, apparently, and I don't even know how you come up with this, Reinhardt's story is causing significant tr trouble, in parentheses, and this is the guy posting this. He gets a redemption arc, destroys Burgundy in Germany, and kills himself after assuming power in his victory of the German Civil War after Hitler dies. Hadrick blowing up the team sounds like another case of things that are the way they are because they are that way, with no real reason to be that way. All development proce process should undergo the scrutiny of someone asking, is this really necessary? Ideally, it should be a dev doing it. If you don't know, Reinhard Hadrick is one of the chief people who orchestrated the Holocaust. And for some reason, in this tranny, what if Axis won World War II thing, he has like like a survivor's guilt or something and then destroys Burgundy, takes over Germany and then kills himself. I have no fucking idea how you even come up with this. Uh, that's what I mean. It's like, I think that they have an issue. Don't, I mean, this is a, this is a really far out there idea. I think these trannies have an issue telling reality apart from fantasy. And they look at historical things and real people that have happened and they come up with fan fiction like Nazi Holocaust fan fiction that doesn't make any fucking sense, but they think that would be like a cute idea in their silly little game mod, and it's it's really baffling. Um, here's a guy who printed this out, and this is one of the things in the OP actually. Um, they made this hoodie that says "Spear Hoodie, Spear Hoodie," because apparently this spear guy is a meme in the Hoey for uh, the next order uh, subreddit. And someone had to, like, remind this guy that if you print the Nazi's face on your hoodie and you walk around in public like that, uh, someone might think you're a Nazi and you have to be careful. <laughs> um, if you don't know, Al Albert Speer was apparently uh, the Minister of Armaments and War Production during World War II and was a close ally of Hitler. Uh, he was convicted in Nuremberg and sentenced to 20 years. Uh, but this tranny thinks that he's fucking really cool and put him on a hoodie <laughs> so he can go to Walmart and buy his estrogen tablets over the counter. Uh, it's a Kekistani flag all over again. It's even worse because it's like they have like a sexualized the Hobbit version of this Albert Spear. Um, and they th they have written like this diary i just noticed that this guy's feet are in this picture here i'll i'll zoom in on this while i do my thing um but like they have like this fantasy uh tolkien version of these real people who really existed and who really did things that many consider very bad and they're putting them on hoodies because in their weird mind they've written like um fan fiction for how they like free france and and kill themselves you know what i mean it's very it's very bizarre uh okay there's some stuff about that i do want to read uh that one's boring uh okay this one's great mystic shit relating to discord it's moderation and complaints about tino's story for personal reason Short one, the Discord should have pronoun roles. I've seen people be misgendered and have to correct others. 
Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for that contribution. Uh, personally, I feel like a lot of the next order's issues with international interaction come from how sterile the ca content planning is. A country has a planned story, which is all well and good, and only really properly interacts with other countries in neat time frames. This is the result of good content planning, but it isn't a good thing. It's too neat, which harms interaction between countries. Take Goring, for example. He is a militarist candidate and invades progressively larger chunks of the world. The planning is so rigid that he is being reworked because he clashes with everyone else's progression of events, but that was the intent. He invades other countries, and this clashes with their individual stories. Um, so this, I mean, this is also a weird thing where you have, like, these myopic teams focusing on one country at a time to try like it's called the world war there was a lot more going on than britain uh you know being english and meddling in other people's affairs as they usually do uh i feel like there's a difference between plebs and team members this is also a funny one i saw a pleb a few months ago posting cat girl meinhof you know i don't even know who meinhof is but i want to know now Ulrike Meinhof was a West German far left. Oh, is she from um the the the, the one of the first terrorists, the Battenberg Mine, whatever the fuck? They did a movie about that that I want to see. I bet you she is. I bet you that's who I'm thinking of. Anyways, so, but she's not a Nazi. That's what I was hoping for. But she's not. <laughs> Um, so cat girl Meinhof in a meme. Now fast forward to the, oh, and was told to stop in a long message. Now fast forward to today and someone posted a cat girl Meinhof in a meme. Moderators say nothing is wrong with it, but why? Isn't it a cat girl Meinhof either way? I feel like team members can get away with breaking the rules, but if a pleb did the exact same thing, they would get struck down. The Bader Meinhof gang. That's what I was thinking of. She also has a sub mod where she is a cat girl. Wonderful. She's a real person, you know. She's probably not a cat girl. Is she dead? Did she kill herself? How'd she die at 41? Oh, she killed herself. And they say that she... Oh, she killed herself in jail. And they say that uh, she was assassinated by the government. Funny. Anyways. Uh, anyways, she's a cat girl in this Discord. And she says, I feel like, like team members can get away with breaking the rules, but if a pleb did the exact same thing, they could struck down. My point is, you either need to warn both plebs and devs for doing or warn neither. You shouldn't just warn one group. I love how they just call, like, fans of their content plebs. <laughs> I guess that's better than kittens. I have an issue with the usage of suicide. I haven't brought it up because I didn't have a chance with Hadrick, given how we don't know. Oh, fuck it. Is he just going to bitch that suicide is... Suicide shouldn't be used as a plot device. I somewhat believe of an unhealthy environment that has built around this team. Tino is not a mod for the faint of heart, full of dark themes and horrific sights as it is, and plenty believe that a player is making the player uncomfortable is part of what Tino does. However, as stated below... The feelings that this invokes in people goes beyond making one simply uncomfortable and can, for many, unearth genuinely horrific real-life trauma that they have directly interacted with. This is not something that we should be proud of and is most definitely something that should be avoided and is definitely an unhealthy mindset to express to others who have felt trauma, though it is unfortunately has been expressed. Yeah, I guess if one of the... Basically, what he's saying is that Hitler shouldn't have killed himself because that would that would a tranny might see Hitler shooting himself in the head and then think, oh, my God, I was thinking about doing that just yesterday. And now I'm so triggered. <laughs> I'm so triggered by Reinhard Heydrich killing himself in this video game that that even the most well mentally adjusted people in the world might look at Reinhard Heydrich killing himself over the guilt of the Holocaust and think maybe, maybe me too. Anyways. <clears throat> Hi everyone. It's come to our attention that Raiders have gained access to the TNO Git through an unsecured GitLab account. This is as much of a private issue for the entirety of the team as it is now a public one in how it affects development 
and as such, we will not be offering any further details into the incident itself due to the sensitive nature of it all. Furthermore, because of the delicacy of this situation and the very aggressive threats received against a few leaders, we have organized a method of exit for them <laughs> while reorganizing current leadership to ensure everything is handled. That's a really awkward way to word that. We've, we've assembled some exit bags. We're going to be sending them a CPAP mask and a helium tank <laughs> in case this is triggering. <laughs> Due to some of the material leak, a notification to law enforcement is being considered and various moderation agencies for sites in connection to the potential leak have been notified and the issue is being handled as soon as it crops up. If you come across this personal information being spread, please be sure to report it to TNO Moderation as well as Reddit and Discord. We will be reposting TNO at a new workshop link, which we'll be making soon. Furthermore, current invites to the server have been temporarily closed due to an incessant attempts at to raid pleb chats. Thank you all so much for giving your continued understanding and patience. To which Baguette says, fuck neo-Nazis. Uh, and then that Abdul Mahid guy says, guys, just ban everyone. What is the problem? Uh, apparently everyone's getting banned. Wait. Wait. I don't know what's in that spoiler. I, I'm literally going to copy this over to a different browser and see what's in that spoiler. Oh, okay. This is Pacifica. This I think this is the same person that I've shown you before. Um, I'll go ahead and read this. This is from the Pink Panzer. This is the, the lead dev that I mentioned before. Uh, I can no longer hear anything further than 40 feet away due to rifle rounds, and I have constant sparks in my eyes from flashbangs. I have a deep-seated anchor problem from the core, hate my life monthly, and am forced not to not move lest I am drowned in years of paperwork. I also cannot eat or work out in a healthy manner due to the pressure to constantly overperform when I exercise and constant binge eating from the on and off schedule. I have been both professionally, you know, spamming come to God, Josh and chat is not going to fucking make me want to come to God. I'm just saying. Fuck off. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyways, about this guy being PTSD. Uh, I have been professionally and personally humiliated by the Marine Corps and, will not, and am not paid anywhere near enough to bother. Every month I have to have men both years younger and older than me act like middle schoolers and gossip and snipe and me and others uh, while I do also do the same to others. Uh, <clears throat> and this is someone asking him what he'll do after this mod gets made. And it's never going to it's never going to get made. Uh, keep working in IT, spend my free time writing and trying to learn to program. So the, the main dev for the next order has no idea how to program, I guess. Apply for every game writing job I can, no matter where it is, in the thin hopes of getting hired for that. If not, hopefully finish learning to program and become an indie game designer. I hate programming, <laughs> but means to an end. Wow, excellent. That's great. That's a great reason to get into an industry because you fucking hate it, but you want to make your tranny cat girl Meinhof game. Uh, the problem with writing jobs, it's so fucking hard to find any. Even in, like, even in real development studios, they don't have fucking uh, writing jobs, really. They usually buy a story from someone, and that's it. Uh, most game programmers don't put, put on a ton of weight or go writing done by contracts I already have in big companies is like right out. I've been trying to find some indie project to write for for years and not being able to land any. So this entire thing was like for him to get his start in like game development as a writer. Very sad. Okay, so... <clears throat> uh, the leaked dev chats from the Tino Discord had Freddy posting his legs and that was the, the person from before. Uh, this one, I think. This is Pacifica, I think. Anyways... Posted this leg shot. Actually, let's compare the feet of the spear hoodie in this. Is this the same pair of feet, chat? Kind of looks like it. Then again, all feet look the same to me. Anyways. Whoa, it looks great. To which he says, eh, that may be skirting the rules. Sorry. Oh, he's so edgy posting his femboy legs in Discord chat. Uh, I accidentally posted questionable pics on the server once. That was unfortunate. I get off to the idea of having my arms and legs be... What the fuck? I get off to the idea of having my arms and legs amputated so I can't resist. I used to have some weird ideas about cutting off on 
of my fingers off and went away with time. That's not it. I have intrusive thoughts. This is wiggling and pleasure on your bed and a pile of dried bodily fluids on your thighs because you're frustrated that someone doesn't literally sexually enslave you. So you're a bottom. <laughs> wow. I want to I want to be a quadruple amputee and turn into a sex stump. And then Jungle Rat says, "So you're a bottom." I <laughs> <laughs> what was your first hint, <laughs> Jungle Rat? <laughs> this this Jungle Rat is a man who just wanted to develop a Hearts and Iron Four mod and does not even fucking know what this shit is. He's a massive, massive bottom, unhealthily bottom. But at the same time, I'm insanely competitive. It makes me feel bad. I feel bad for being better than others because I'm insanely bottom. But I, but I feel bad when I'm not better than everyone at everything because I'm a perfectionist. I don't know what to do about it, really. I don't feel love, honestly. I feel sexual attraction and what can only be described as a burst of extreme friendship. This guy's a psychopath. So much to check his fucking basement for sex stumps. So, okay, you still had to restrain yourself from attacking something, and you said you've had thoughts about attacking your family. I think the worst thing, really, is that they turned me on just sitting there, imagining splitting apart my classmate with a pin, and suddenly I'm wet. This guy needs to be in jail. This guy needs to be in jail. We're putting all sex stump sadists into fucking jail where they belong. This guy's insane. Okay. Um, I didn't actually read through all these. I just saw the screenshots. I'm like, okay, fuck it. I'll read the chat logs. It'll be funny. Um, I have a picture I'm going to share with everyone. I'm going to put this in Discord because I'm going to send a picture to everyone. And I want uh, I want everyone to see it. But I can't put it on screen. It's just, it's just going to be a secret thing between us. I didn't know Noel liked this stuff. Fuck you. <laughs> He's trying to show off his booba. He's trying to show off his booba to everyone. Like, look, look, guys, I have booba. I'm a real woman. I'm a real stump girl now. What I, what I really like about this picture is, let me, um, <clears throat> let me describe this for people who, who are only listening and are not going to see this picture. Um, imagine, like, really skinny, and I don't know what you call that when you have, like, a concave chest where there's, like, a dimple under your ribs. But really skinny, has that dimple, and then has like the cup, like an A or B cup size. I don't, I don't know raw sizes, but there is definitely booba shape, just not actual booba. It's just like a shape. It's uh, I'll describe it like this: it's not enough booba to look like booba, but it is enough booba to get picked on in your middle school gymnasium. That that's the description that I can. An AA man cup. Okay, we'll go with that. It's called pectus excavatum and i'm very smart okay thank you it's called booba it's called man booba <laughs> that's the latin term for this i'm not showing the pic on screen you go to the discord go to don't at me and then look at the first image you'll pre you'll thank me later let us continue with this story uh, well i guess the person try who gets wet looking at or thinking about killing people is not Pacific. Yeah, it's not. Okay. Pacific Pacific did want to be the stump, though. Um, Fresh throwaway Kiwi, who has that Keanu Reeves Big Chungus avatar, uh, says, Hey, everyone. Former TNO dev here. I don't have much to add on top of what everyone else has said and shared. But I do have one interesting tidbit I felt was worthy of making an account and posting about. Pacifica has their own clicky Discord server separate from the main TNO Discord itself which is filled to the brim with both former and current members of the dev team, as well as a few outside friends. I was a part of it for a brief time. From what I saw there, it seemed like prime grooming grounds for all sorts of debauchery, complete with the Not Safe for Work channel, where if memory serves me correctly, they would share weird sissification hypno-pornography. Sadly, I'm not in that server anymore. That's not what you say after you say that last thing, buddy. Uh, I'm not in that server anymore, and I have no way of sharing any of this stuff, but it seems like another fresh ground for trinery outside of what people have already dug up. Figured it was worth a mention. <clears throat> so, that that is the story of TNO. That is that is the story of a Hearts of Iron mod. One man, one man, on a mission to stuff his resume so he can get a writing job for a video game. 
makes a mod for Hearts of Iron 4, which leads to tranny grooming and stump amputee sex, sex fetishism. And somehow, can, <laughs> can you imagine if, if um, Pacifica, here, I'll bring this up again. Here, okay. This, this is their Hearts of Iron 4 general portrait. I'm just imagining them as like a stump in like a general chair, like barking out orders, like move division four, three clicks north to head off the fascist menace. And they're like waving their stumps, wildly gesticulating the stumps at the, the you know, the, the cliche map on the table with the little Monopoly pieces on the board with the, the grid and stuff. Move them with three clicks. We need to cut them off. We're going to win circle Hitler here. And they're just a, that's a funny image to me. I hope someone, if you guys, if someone out there is like a, a draw fag, I don't, please, please make this a reality. I'll feature it. I'll put it on the front page. Don't make it pornographic, but make it funny. 